We are here in Stewart Town. A vigil is being held by the people of the entire area, Port Maria, Arocabessa, and here in Stewart Town, where the two missionaries from the United States, Harold Nichols and Randy Helmsell, were brutally murdered in the Albion Mountain region a couple of days ago. We certainly want to give God thanks for the lives of these men who gave themselves in service to our nation for the last 14 years. And here they have come to an untimely and brutal end. But certainly we rejoice because their weakness have been there. But it is speaking to the problem that has plagued our nation for decades the issue of crime and violence a problem we must find a solution to and we must cry to our God and with the wisdom of God and the workings of government and the security forces with a resolution for real answers to tackle this monster but here the people are this evening giving praise to God and honoring the lives of these servants of the living God. They are having a candle, a vigil, candle lighting. And as you notice, there is a numbers of people because they are grateful for the contribution of these men. And the ministers fraternal of this area is supporting this event. And we have just come to identify with them to stand with them because we are brothers in Christ and the kingdom of God is here and present and we must continue to proclaim this gospel of the kingdom. The situation here is evidence of why the gospel of the kingdom is needed more than ever because it is by the gospel of the kingdom that men's lives will be transformed and we need the transformation in the lives of men we need the value system of the kingdom of God rooted in the love of God and love of neighbor as we love ourselves and we must get our nation back to those fundamental principles of love and care and reverence for life yes we are celebrating praise to God for the lives of these men but it is mourning the lives not only of them but the hundreds of the citizens of this nation who die every year as a result of criminal activity and we are not a nation that is supposed to be at war and we are taking more lives annually than many nations that are at war we'll be sharing with you from highlights from what is happening here. It is not beyond us. We are well able as a people. And so let us pray. Let's cry to the God of heaven who sees all, who knows all. And that God of heaven will answer from heaven. And he will do justly. In that we have confidence this evening. So continue to pray. Continue to believe. Continue to stand in faith. Not only for the 
these two men but we see what is happening to so many every month but by the grace of God we shall overcome amen we shall overcome in the name of the lord for we are more than conquerors through him who has loved us and so then be in faith be in confidence do not allow what has happened to shake your faith we attempted to ask some tough questions but no come on when it is dark trust god when you can see the way trust god when you don't understand trust god when you understand trust god for the lord he is god and so the peace of god be with you This is indeed a very sad and painful occasion for these people of the communities here in Stewart Town and the surrounding areas who these men have faithfully served for the last 14 years. But it is sad for all of us as a nation and as a Christian community because we understand the price we often have to pay in the execution of the faith in the carry out the call of duty to serve the advancing of the kingdom of the living God but it is an occasion to remind us that we must proclaim the value of human life that we must as a nation reinforce in every occasion through our education system there is nothing more valuable than life because life represents God life is given with purpose to be lived in purpose and nothing should interfere to intercept a man a woman a child who has been given life to advance the cause of the kingdom and to make the impact upon the world let us then as a people as a nation resolutely commit to deal with this scourge upon our nation the change must come and it must come now we must deal with it and we must deal with it in our lifetime is it beyond us not by any means but by the grace of god we will establish righteousness truth and justice it's a must anytime as a nation we come together as one people, no powers on earth, nor in hell, will be able to defeat or to separate us. Tonight is a show of support that we wear different labels and we are here in different capacities, but we are one people, one cause. When, you know, sometimes the society is against the church and the church against the society, I want to pay tribute tonight um, to the counselor of the Boscobel Division because he came together with the church and we have indeed successfully staged this candlelight vigil as we celebrate the life of our brothers, I want to put your hands together um, for this honorable gentleman. I want to say to you that something sad has taken place in St. Mary. Two of our brothers who work assiduously for the advancement of this parish has been taken down but as i have said and i've heard somebody said it tonight while the voices of two of god's servants are silent tonight the church of god and the community 
meeting here in Stuart Town say that we will be their voice in St. Mary. That we will be the voice of God in St. Mary. That nothing will stop the work of the church in St. Mary. Because we are united under God. And no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rise in condemnation and judgment shall be brought low. There's a thing in Jamaica that they call reprisal. And under as chaplains, a part of our role is to ensure working with the police that there be no reprisal. I want to send an honor the way tonight. The church is decently on a path of reprisal. But it's not with weapons. It is not with gun because the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God, pulling down stronghold. St. Mary is reprising through prayer and a strong resolve that the blood of our brothers will not go in vain. Never. They have touched a lot of individuals, but they were wrong when they touched the church. Because the church is in prayer, and we know without a shadow of a doubt that these culprits will be brought to justice, and it will be swift. Because when you trouble the church, you trouble God, and you can't mess around God. I was reasoning the other day and I said I would rather get in trouble with man than God because when man trouble you you can run to God but when God trouble you you can who can run to there is no hiding place for these culprits because they have troubled the servants of God they have troubled the work of God and there'll be no resting place. The John, it's a pleasure meeting you. I know that this is a very difficult period, but I would love to ask you if you could just share with us a little bit about Harold and Randy and your ministry. Just what, who are these men and what have they been doing and what your ministry does? Harold and Randy have been on the ground here with us for a very long time. Harold has been here about uh, 13 years and Randy about five or six. And they are the heart of our ministry here. Uh, Teams for Medical Missions goal is to simply share the love of Christ and to draw people to himself and to come alongside and encourage the local church. We do that through a lot of different ministries. Uh, we have medical teams that come down. We have building teams that come down. We have teaching teams that come down. Our missionaries here on the ground do children's ministry. They do youth ministry. Uh, they do aid in the community. And uh, they, they love on people. That's what they do. Wonderful. And we've, we've lost two men that dearly love the Lord, dearly love Jamaicans. Uh, but we're excited about what's ahead. We're excited about what's coming before. I know, John, that when folks go through difficulties like these, men who have been pivotal in the ministry, that sometimes we can wonder when a tragedy like this happens. Is the minister, how will that affect the ministry? Will the ministry figure that boy? What, what's the next steps you see? How will, will, are you going to continue? How will the ministry respond? I think our viewers would love to understand how our faith trips in in tough times. Yes. Teams for Medical Missions is still committed to Jamaica. Teams for Medical Missions is still committed to Jamaicans themselves. We are committed to Jamaica and we are going to stay. Wonderful. I want to say, John, thank you so much for what your ministry 
has done and continue to do for us we really on behalf of our people I really want to say we appreciate you and I think it is good for our viewers to understand that faith in God enables us to be able to cope with tough difficult situations because we stand not merely in our own strength but in the strength of the Lord and that's what I hear you saying that the ministry you will continue to serve because you feel that sense of call to our people again I say thank you thank you thank you and do know from our own ministry if there is any way that we can help and support then we want to help you to do better what God has call you to do thank you so much thank you just stay with us as we take it into our real change segment Our brother's keeper every one of us is our brother's keeper we must ensure the best welfare of each other because we were created to love one another to care for one another to support one another and that is the expectation of God that that's how we need to live and so we must show our reverence for God by respecting the lives of other men and women care for the lives of others and help and support each other and so ladies and gentlemen, because then he says the bloodshed of the innocent pollutes the land. And it brings a curse. By pollution it meaning it brings a curse. It defiles the land. And when a land is defiled, he says that atonement must be made. Because if no atonement is made for the bloodshed of the innocent, then it, the curse is upon that town because of the defilement so they must do something about it in a practical way then I also want to say is your town what is happening now you have to police your town and you can't make outside man come in and keep up arms house in a fair place and then if you bear the bad name for it you have to deal with it you can't entertain it it not, not, not mean that outsiders can't come in but if you come in you conform if you come in you behave yourself if you come in you live like we but if you have to keep up arms house you have to bowl enough to say yo my yard it can't go on wrong here you know so if you have to keep up the army arms house take away yourself take away yourself because we don't put up with it not to hide beyond mountain but if you lie down and quiet when I she school walking, they all glide on in it. So you cannot not say nothing. And you can't make fear overtake you either. You have to be bold. And man have to stand up like a man. And say, my town this, we can't handle it so. And so I'm challenging you, Albion Mountain. Take responsibility for your community. Own your community. Work to make your community among one of the best communities in Jamaica. Cry down God to bless your community. Ask God to prosper your community. Ask God to open up opportunities for your children that they can make it. Because what we need to succeed in life is the blessing of God more than anything else. Not just to have brain, that's good. To have a good mind, we need that. But all of that comes from God. And on top of that, we need the blessing of God for your success. And so I invite you to ask God to bless your community. Ask God to bless your house. Take charge of your house. Come on, men. Be leaders in your house. Pray over your family. Commit them to God. Ask God's blessing upon them. And anything that will affect them, you have to protect them. That's your responsibility. You protect them spiritually. You protect them physically. You protect them in the natural world. That's your job. You are to be the gatekeeper of your house. Like you are the gatekeeper of your community. Determine what comes in and what comes out. 
and make sure the only thing you let in is what is going to make your house, your family, and your community better. Anything that is going to destroy your house, your family, your community, you have to say, take away yourself. We will not allow it here because it's your house. It's your family. It's your community. You are responsible. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come to you, mighty God, for your word declares that through him we can approach your throne of grace. And we stand in agreement with the people of Albion community. We stand with every elder, every boy, every girl, every man, woman, child, even the animals in this community. And we are in agreement, mighty God, that something tragic and evil has occurred and we know not done by who and as elders and as priests we agree with them and we apply the blood of jesus yes, over this community father we apply the blood of jesus over every square over every road over every lane over every house mighty god over every shop over every settlement in the name of jesus I'm here in Wentworth, just standing in front of the house that the two missionaries, Harold and Randy, that they came helping to complete the construction of this house for a lady in the community who had need. And it is having left here that they were on their way back into the town of Port Maria to head home that they were pounced upon somewhere between Wentworth and Albion Mountain as they were riding their trail bikes and they were brutally murdered. Very sad indeed and it is that for which we must as a nation we mourn the loss and the family we have shared and shared a lot with you about it and we just wanted you to see it. We are here today in the community of Wentworth just talking with the community being an encouragement to the community for them to understand spiritually how they ought to respond to this kind of situation how we make atonement for the innocent blood that is shed because the scriptures are very clear that then innocent blood is shed on a land in a town in a district that it defiles the land and that atonement must be made to break the effect of the curse because like we saw in the scriptures God said to Cain the blood of your brother cries out to me and he said that atonement must be made because it does require an accounting for the blood of man when it is shed because man was made in the image of God and so we then need to pray that those who have carried out this wicked act that they would be brought to justice and let us every citizen of this nation pray and also work for justice for truth for righteousness to prevail that the many persons who have lost their lives where we have been silent then we must know we need to speak out against every form of injustice and criminality and where we have information about those who carry out these acts we must speak about it because if we know and do not speak remain silent then God holds us responsible as partaker of the evil and therefore we will reap the just recompense of reward so we need to speak the silence it is a destructive force and we can never rid our nation of evil of corruption and all the attendant problems if we choose to remain silent and we're not talking here simply being informers but it is taking responsibility and fighting for justice and do not let anyone call you an informer when you stand for principle and stand for justice and stand for truth and stand for righteousness we sometimes must be prepared to stand alone when we stand for truth rather than to remain silent because ultimately it works 
to the detriment of our own lives and our community and nation suffers. So we bear with the people here of Wentworth and certainly want to just support them because they feel the pain, what it means for their community that it is now being declared in a negative light and they are innocent of it. They do not know of it. But like is happening all across our country, this is upon us. And there are many, many persons who have come into many of these communities and tarnishing it because they have been having a lot of break-ins and gun men holding up people in the Albion area. I'm sure similarly over here because many have been moved out of the cities and out of places where the police are looking for them and they are making many of these communities their hiding places. And so we have to be vigilant. And so I want to encourage you in your community, strangers in the community, you must know who they are. And if they are not of the element that is helping to build and develop the community, then therefore you must tell them no, they are not welcome unless they will be part of the growth and the development of, of the community and inform the police where there, are, there is suspicious behavior and activity. Speak out because if not, your own silence can mean your own destruction. Engage the process and let's all work together for real change in our nation. But everywhere that evil happens in the country because a free country and we have to build it. Yeah. A free country, we have to do what is going to take to make this nation great. We have to take it back from the hands of criminals and wicked and evil men because I know plenty of them make the world we look bad. No. And neither we can allow fear to grip us where we're so afraid that by we, we just want to be afraid for sanity. No man, you cannot let fear overtake you. Because the thing that you fear, you run the risk of the same thing happening to you. So it's better to face it and deal with it. And there is more ways than one to deal with it. In the name, In the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Yes. Every generational curse yes. on the maternal, on the paternal, yes. every curse in the bloodline, we cut it off. In the name of Jesus, we pronounce a blessing upon them. We pronounce life upon them. Life, life, life. In the name of Jesus, they shall fulfill the purpose for which they were born. They are wonderful. They are fearfully and wonderfully made. They are intelligent. They are bright father. Bless them with ideas and creativity, mighty God. We speak success, increase, and prosperity over their lives. We break every curse of poverty and lack in the name of Jesus. As you have seen, this situation is one of concern to all of us as a people and as a nation. Let's work together to make Jamaica great. Let's work to overcome this monster of crime and violence. We are well able to take it out, but we must employ the strategies that can effectively do that. Participate in the process because you are part of the solution. As we shared with you that we were in Albion Mountain and we want to just greet the folks in Albion Mountain. Thank you so much for hosting us and just being able to share with us and we ask you again play your role in helping to deal with this issue that's fine let's find a solution then we went over as well into Wentworth and we again want to say thank you so much to the people of, of Wentworth what a warm set of folks we just had a wonderful grand time over there thank you for your hospitality for your care thank you for the hey the soup and Miss Miller Thank you, my name's sake. The soup was good. Thank you so much. And work together a community to make your community strong. And what we say to the communities of Albion and to Wentworth in St. Mary, so for all the communities across of our nation, you take responsibility for your community. Know what's happening in your community. Report on the negative things or the and wrong things that happen in your community and work together as a people to make it strong and live in the kind of way that the blessing of God can rest upon it. Join us again for another Word Power next week. Same time, we look forward to sharing with you. God bless you. Have a great week. And remember, a fubi country, let's build it. God bless you. Come on, people of God.